My name is Ali Mongola. I'm your co-host uh, this afternoon. And today we're speaking about production design and uh, its importance in filmmaking. So um, as you may or may not know, my name is Ali Mongola. I'm a freelance art director. I've been doing uh, freelance work since 88 when I first started. Um, let me just get to sharing my screen with you. So, um, I would like to, uh, PowerPoint, just hang on this. Yes, so um, this afternoon I'm talking about production design and its relevance in filmmaking. Uh, that's just my cover page. And I'll just introduce myself uh, again. I'm Ali Mongola. I'm a freelance art director. I've been working in film since 1988, specifically in the art department. Um, the picture you see there was actually my first ever production that I worked on. It was Mountains of the Moon, a story about Speak, Burton, and their exploration activities in East Africa. And uh, if you recall the history of, of, of um, the expeditions, the one place they visited was uh, the Kabaka Mutesa's palace. Um, so this photograph you see is actually of the palace that was uh, built in Kedong Valley, which is behind Gong Hills. And this was my classroom. This is the first time ever that I'd been on a film set, that's after graduating from university with a BA in design. So it was a new learning experience for me. And I have to say, I learned a lot um, on that very first production. I got to understand exactly the whole process of filmmaking and exactly how the art department functions um, in a big production, multi-million shilling production like this one. Um, so I was there for, about three months, we, we, we worked together with the construction team here. And my biggest tutors, much as I worked with the production designer, the art director were from the UK and the head construction managers were also from the UK. I learned the most from the construction team that was actually building this, um, about materials, about what to use, how to build, how to work, you know, uh, spending whole days there and just seeing something rising from two dimension on a paper that you've drawn to three dimension, as you can see there. So uh, from 88, I worked subsequently on, on um, many other films and TV series uh, in 89, uh, 90, 91, 90, 94, 97, uh, 98, 99, uh, 2001. 2002 is when I first did a, a local film as a production designer that was uh, Dangerous Affair that was directed by Judy Kibinge and produced by Jerry Carago. Uh, and then there was 2003, there was Babu's Babies. I also did the production design on that. Um, this is obviously back in the day when we went digital and there was a lot of, uh, we, did, we, we shot and it was, it was actually sold on VHS, which is uh, pretty old <laughs> as of now, but that's what happened. And subsequently I went on working in um, 2003, 2006, 2007, sorry, I worked on Heart on Fire. 2010, I did the Guinness Book, uh, Football Challenge. And the last film I worked on was um, in 2016 was uh, Sense8 Season 2 as an assistant art director. So that's just my history in a nutshell, just quickly running through it, um, um, just, for your not, just for you to know. So I'll just jump straight to it and ask, what is production design? Um, it's a term used in film, television series, TV commercials, and music video production. It encompasses, excuse me a minute. It encompasses the co concept, design, creation, and arrangement of all visual elements in a screen narrative and ensures that all conceptual ideas run consistently and coherently throughout the story. 
In short, it is the thread that links all visual components of the project together. So um, again, because it's a, it's a story you're telling. So how does it all come together? We're looking specifically at how the production design enhances or helps in making the film complete and you know, helps in, in, in telling the whole story. So what is the production designer's role? The production designer is responsible for the overall look and, feel, look and feel of any filmed project. From movies, TV series, music videos, and TV commercials. They are visual storytellers who commute emotion and atmosphere to support the story's narrative. Because anytime you go watch a film, you always notice you're very emotional. It, it, it touches you in a way. And production design plays a big part, as you will come to see. Through conceptualization and realization, conceptualization, that's when you're deciding, you're designing uh, the ideas and putting them down on paper, to realization when you actually build the set and uh, paint it and finish it with all the dressing and everything. They create sets on sound stages and choose locations to fit the project's visual concept. Um, I hope I'm clear so far. Sorry, I, keep, I seem to be losing my mouse here, but. So the production designer interacts with many departments across the production. However, they work very closely with the director, the director of photography and the producer. So establishing a good working relationship early on is essential for the success of the project. These are the people who start the earliest in pre-production because again, they all receive the script, they all read it, and each one has got to interpret it in their, in their own way. But as the production designer, you're helping the director of photography and, the, and uh, the director in realizing their vision because you have to have a vision. The director may want to see certain things, may have certain ideas and it's for you to help them in that process. The DOP is there to just make sure you're we're all on the same page because he's the one who's gonna be filming the project. So he's got to know exactly what you're thinking of, what you want to build or what you want to design or which locations you will use, etc. So depending on the size of the project, the production designer is the head of the art department, while on smaller projects with lower budgets, the production designer and art director may be the same person. Okay, let me move to our next. Now, this is the art department hierarchy. As, as I said, the production designer is the head of the art department, as you can see, and uh, I'll just go step by step. Um, with each of the people or each of the crew who are working below, well, not below, but with the production designer. So as you can see there, the next person on the list is the art director. Um, he works directly below the production designer in collaboration with the set decorator, as you can see there, and above the set designer. Um, a large part of their duties include the administrative aspects of the art department. Um, and are responsible for assigning tasks to personnel, keeping track of art department budgeting and scheduling. As you know, um, with film, with the filmmaking process, it's show business. So there is money involved. It's a business like, like any other business, except that it's, it's entertainment, but still um, you will find that, um, you know, there's huge sums of money involved and everything's gotta be done within budget. It does happen sometimes that you go over budget or sometimes the film doesn't even get completed because people run out of money and all. So it's really important that with the art department, the, side, the money side is administered well, okay? Uh, scheduling, as you know, um, with a film, you've got a certain amount of time to prepare, a certain period to shoot and to wrap. So with the scheduling, the art director is working very closely with the first AD in knowing how they've scheduled the shoot. And in knowing how they've scheduled the shoot, then you'll know how to go about the work, how many locations you have to work in, which one requires the most work, uh, when to get started, how many people to employ. Um, sorry, art director. They are often also the liaison to other departments 
especially the construction department. If you notice, um, there's the dotted line that runs round, right down to the bottom where the construction manager is. That is because once all the drawings are done and everything is ready for, for construction, the construction manager will need to know, to work out their quantities. And that's why you have to do uh, scale drawings. So you know exactly how much quantity of timber is needed, all the materials that you use basically, okay? So the responsibilities works directly under the production designers, the creative and organizing person, supervises set construction and painting, as well as modifications of existing locations like changing carpets, print, painting the walls, changing light fixtures and signage. Uh, supervises the draftsman or draws himself, controls the budget in pre-production, shoot and after wrap and collaborates closely with production and accounting because it's all about the money as well. Works closely with the set decorator and coordinates the art department, is present on technical recce. Um, as, you, as you know, I'll, I guess I'll explain it later, but there's always, uh, the recce are when the crew, the key personnel in all the different departments, visit the various locations to see, obviously the progress, but more important to work out how they'll all work within that space, within that location. You're working out logistics and stuff like that. So it's really important that uh, all the key personnel in the different departments visit the location and discuss everything on set and on location. So the art director sometimes may represent the production designer because again, there are many different uh, locations and maybe the production designer may be involved in other meetings discussing other issues. Um, so basically that's it with the set with the art director. Next, we move to the set decorator. Now, the set decorator is responsible for choosing, budgeting, and placing all the decorative items which support the story and, spe and specify the characters in their environment. Okay, all the dressing. So the set dresser um, usually goes out to get all the, I mean, the set decorator, my bad. The set decorator um, is involved in finding and getting all the dressing that you need for the set. Okay, so um, communicate to the production designer and director about the stylistic concept of the set. Uh, all films are set in a particular time period. Some may be modern, some may be a period film set back in the 60s, 50s, 40s, and it may be futuristic, sci-fi especially. So you've got to that's where the whole stylistic uh, concept comes in. Okay. Um, creates a set dressing concept with a mood board and work plans, hires or buys various items from prop houses or private collectors. Sometimes you may not get everything available and you may need to approach uh, collectors who have lots of art, uh, sculptures, paintings, or even pieces of furniture, heirlooms, you know, there's, there's stuff that has been handed down for generations that they've kept and it may work well in the film. So usually go and, and, and talk to them and talk about hiring and the like. So hires or buys various items from the pop, prop houses or private collectors, outsources the making of special props and upholstery. Sometimes you may find that certain props that are needed for the film are not available. You can't get them anywhere from a prop house or from, from collectors and the like. So you, you, you outsource it and have somebody make it. And that's why it's important uh, to understand craftsmanship and to appreciate craftsmanship, because that helps you a lot in terms of the overall look of the picture. Will you get the right kind of furniture? Will you get the right, you know, lamp fittings or, 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 or lampshades and things like that? Okay. Hire set dressers and drivers to dress and, and wrap the set. Collaborates with the DOP and lighting crew on the use of things like practical lamps. You know, when you're, when you're working on set, if your set is a living room, bedroom, office, whatever, uh, you light it in a certain way. And, and, you know, each space has a certain way that it is lit. But because it's a film, um, obviously you have to consider that it's a camera that's shooting it. What kind of lights are you putting in? Are they, are they fluorescent? Are they warm you know all that kind of uh, stuff so you have to make sure that you collaborate well with the lighting department 
uh, takes care of all insurance matters and any damage and returns all hired items after wrap. As you know, when you're hiring stuff, when you're hiring props and you're hiring dressing, it is expensive. Any damage will cost the production. So it's really important that uh, there's insurance cover provided by the production. And it's up to the set decorator to make sure that it's, it's, it's in order. And uh, lastly, they close the set decoration budget once you wrap. So some of the skills uh, that you, you ought to have as a set de decorator, which will certainly help you in your, in your work. You've got to ex you have to have experience in interior design, art history, and design style. Uh, have knowledge of the te technical aspects of filmmaking, as camera angles and things like that. Must be creative and flexible and be a team organizer. Remember, as the set decorator, you've got your set designer there. You've got your, your set decorator assistant. You've got your set dressers. So you have to be able to arrange the team to work well and in tandem. So you're not in a situation where uh, dressing or props are late or could not be found and things like that, because that'll be a delay. Any day delayed is costing the production. Um, should have knowledge about construction and know how to read drawings. Again, um, as, as a set decorator, you may be given a drawing and told this is how we plan to dress the living room or the kitchen or the bedroom. So if you don't know how to read it, you may not understand what each, uh, where to put each piece or you know, how it'll help. So it's really important to have that experience. And finally, know how to control a budget. Never allow your budget to, to run away from you. Okay, so that's, with the, that's uh, so far, that's, uh, how far down we've come within the hierarchy of the art department. Next below the set decorator. And as I say below, it's just as you see it here. I mean, we all work as equals on a team, of course. I mean, there's the head of department, yes, but each one of you has got, you're a team, essentially. You're a member of a team. And each one has got their own contribution to give. So um, that's how it works. Now the prop master, the prop master researches and hires or buys all necessary movable items for the shoot. These are items needed while shooting and those may be handled by actors, which he presents to the director. As a props person, yes, you've got your standby props on set, but as the prop master, you're the one who's gonna come with all the relevant props that, that they need. And what are props? It could be anything from a mobile phone, handbag, uh, jewelry, watches, what a gun, uh, you know, pistol and things like that. They're action props um, to things even like newspapers and, and the like, magazines, you know, uh, and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, provides action vehicles. Uh, because there may be too many, and uh, obviously it needs somebody who, under, who, who can, who can uh, manage, get the drivers, make sure they're properly serviced, they're working all the time, and the like. So provides action vehicles, as well as newspapers, books, passports, and photographs, and also works with a graphic artist. For example, with newspapers, uh, you may find that you'll have to create your own newspapers for your film. So what do you do? You know, you need a, a graphic artist who can do the masthead for you. And, and kind of throwing pictures and copy and the like and make it look as real as possible. Um, you make a breakdown, makes a breakdown and prepares lists during preparation, yeah. And that's something maybe I should have mentioned earlier, even at the set decorator. Once you, you, you get your script, um, you have to read it and then you break it down. You break it down according to your needs and what, what, what exactly will be required for each location, each scene and the like. Okay. So uh, manage, uh, controls the props department, uh, props department budget, manages the prop store. Because again, whenever you, you, you um, once you start um, purchasing props or hiring props, you need to store them. It's important that you have, by the time the shoot is starting, you have all your props that you need for each and every location and for all scenes. And you need to put them in the prop store and you mark them out or, uh, or label them so that the, the, the art department team, the standby props, excuse me, the set dresses and the like 
will know exactly what prop they need on which day. Um, collaborates, uh, co um, coordinates purchases with the prop buyer and the art department driver, collaborates with the costume department regarding props that are considered costume. And that's what I talked about, watches, jewelry, handbags, towels, luggage, things like that. But the costume department, it's mainly things like, you know, jewelry, hand, um, makeup, you know, and, 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 and things like that. Provides weapons if needed through the help of a licensed armorer. you may find that you are you either approach the police department early enough the police armor early enough and request to hire certain weapons and they, they usually oblige and they give you um an armor to assist you um uh, but in some instances you may not be able to get guns so what do you do you may have to make um fake weapons but you have to make sure that you inform, the production informs the police department of that intention and um, make sure that upon finishing the shoot, all those fake weapons are handed to the police for safekeeping. Because you know what happens when uh, they fall into the wrong hands, anything could go wrong. Okay, um, so collaborate to the makeup department in, in, in the event that the makeup is used as a prop, which I've mentioned, establishes contacts with brand owners in the event of product placement uh, with the help of production lawyers. Product placement, what I'm talking about here is your beer, your soft drink, your bread, anything that has got a brand, uh, chocolate, you name it. Usually, if you're shooting a film and you're cast maybe in a bar drinking or you know the brand name so sometimes you may work out to the owner of the brand to give you product placement in the event that you can't get that you actually have to create your own um you know brands which is, is not hard i mean these days with the, on the internet and stuff you can just come up with an image a name and a graphic artist can make you really nice um uh, brand uh, stickers and the like okay uh wraps the set after shooting and returns the hired items that's obvious and closes the budget and deals with all insurance matters regarding loss or damage again props You've got so many things, you, you're, you're, there's so many props you're handling. Some may be damaged in the process of loading and loading, moving from one location to another. Sometimes accidents do happen. Uh, even though you try as much as possible to have your team work as uh, diligently and be as careful as possible. You wrap, if you're hiring any stuff, make sure you've got bubble wrap, you've got blankets and things like that that you use to, to, to um, protect the props. Okay, so the skills, knowledge of, uh, of the technical aspects of filmmaking, craftsmanship, which is important. Sometimes you may be forced to make something quickly on set there, not on set, but you know, something that's needed and you should be able to work with your tools. Hammer, nails, fishing line, cutting knife, you know, timber, mounting board, you know, stuff like that. Uh, flexibility and the ability to organize workflow, general education and art history and knowledge about special effects. Now, special effects, what are you talking about? You're talking about fires, you're talking about smoke and things like that. Um, and it's good as a prop master if you have, if you must, if you're able to master um, those aspects of uh, special effects. I should have put special effects somewhere there. So special effects is, works very closely with the prop master. Okay. DOP to fulfill the vision of the production designer during the, the shoot. So when you're a standby props, you're actually representing the art department on the set. So you're a really critical member of the crew and a critical and, and a representative of your head of department. So no cock-ups, please. Be organized, plan, you know, organize yourself and be alert. Okay, so represent the art department on set, working closely with the director and DOP to fulfill the vision of the production designer during the shoot. As uh, like the other members of the crew, they makes a script breakdown for every shooting day during preparation, uh, dresses the set according to the frame, 
adjust the set to make room for the camera and rebuild it later. So, so whenever, if you've ever been on a film set, sometimes when they've set the camera, the DOP may notice that they've got, they've got a lot of blank space or they need something to, to, to hide an edge or they need an edge or, you know, just to make the frame more interesting. And that's where the standby props comes in. Sometimes we may have a greens person and the greens person will be there to make sure, well, there's greenery, you know, a, a hanging branch or a, a potted plant or something that you need just to, to, to fill the frame. Okay. Uh, talking about uh, adjust the set to making room sometimes, or oh, well, not sometimes, in most instances, when you build a set, you have floating walls. And the reason for that is that um, if the camera has to move, change position, it's easier if you just move the wall and they were able to maybe lay their tracks or set up their, 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 the camera on sticks and, and shoot a different direction and that kind of thing. So the standby carpenter and standby painter, which if you move a wall and then have to put it back, you have to knock it back together, paint, you know, do some touch-ups of painting and that you know, uh, gives it continuity. Or rather it doesn't look, what's, what am I trying to say? That helps in shooting or completing shooting certain scenes within a, a, a particular space. Um, where was I? Okay, is it, now the standby props is ever present during the shoot, staying close to the director and the camera to react to every request. When you're in the zone then you, you know, the shoot is going on and when the director notices, oh, can you give the, give the actor uh, a newspaper, give them a magazine, give them a book. Uh, can we have this? Can we have, uh, can we have him having, you know, sometimes there are last minute changes that are made by the director uh, and you just have to be, you have to stand by and be sure that you can provide that. Um, looks out for continuity with the help of script continuity. Now, this is the case where the cast may be carrying something or wearing something or may have something on their lapel or, so it's a situation where if they, if they finished uh, a, a shot a scene or finished uh, shooting one angle and they want to change the angle, you don't have a situation where the cast was drinking a cup of water with his right hand and the next scene is drinking with the left hand. That'll really cause a lot of uh, problems for the editor, and it'll be, it'll look funny even on 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 the on the film. So the continuity lay person there is obviously there to help you make sure that you don't get it wrong. If the lapel was folded, if they had the cup in the left hand, it's still in the left hand. If it was a glass, it was half full, or and that kind of thing hands all action props to cast and explains how they are to be used or handled and collects them after use, okay? So these are specific props that may be, it could be a mobile phone, it could be a pistol, it could be whatever gadget they have. So you as the standby props, you have it, you've gotten it from your prop store, from your prop master, you have it on set. If need be, you show the actor how to use it. Although in most instances, sometimes uh, during rehearsal, actors are able to uh, train or learn how to use that particular prop. Okay. And uh, prepares, another thing that they do is they prepare edible props daily for use on set and is in constant dialogue with the director and prop master in the event of any special need that's required. Usually in scenes where act the cast are having a meal, you have to be able to provide food that is edible. I know they don't eat a lot. They just take a small morsel in their mouth, but it's got to be something edible. It can't be something horribly tasting because it'll be difficult to keep a straight face and there's something horrible in your mouth. Um, must have a well-equipped props toolkit and possessed craftsman skills. Now with your toolkit, you know, you've got your hammer, nails, uh, you've got your fishing line, you've got your staple gun, you know, so they can knock together things. Sometimes they may want an extra picture frame or, you know, they may want, they may want uh, something to hang lower, a picture to hang lower. So adjust the length and open it back up or sometimes just lower the, the, uh, lower the, 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 the hook. 
uh, maintains a cordial relationship with other departments on set in order to make work smooth and aid in concentration. Because you're on set, when you're on set, that that's the your your that's the the zone. That's where it's all happening. Everything else around is all focused on the set, and you've got to work as a team. Even though you're a member of the art department, but you're working closely with camera people, the grips, the lighting people. So you've got to work together and work as a team. If they have to move stuff, if they have to hide stuff, that's what you do. Uh, yeah, so it helps other departments hide tables and cleans the set after shoot to help the set dressers do their work. So it's another thing. Once you finish wrapping, you know, when you're, when you're shooting on set, people are maybe having their snacks as well when there's a break or something like that. Um, things are moved around and all that. So they may be, you know, rubbish discarded and stuff like that. So you just tidy up. Sometimes you're shooting in a person's house. Sometimes you're in an establishment, a restaurant, a hotel. Uh, much as you've hired the space, you have to have uh, the general respect of the space. And, and, you know, you're not the only person who worked there. Another production may come and like the space and want to use it again. If you make a mess of things, then things will get difficult for for the next production who may not even be permitted. So it's important to make sure that you're tidy. It's all part of being professional and it's, 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 it helps a lot. Okay, some of the skills, knowledge of art history, color, materials and the environment, craftsmanship, like I've said, communication skills and teamwork, ability to remain focused on set. Don't be distracted. Don't look at your phone and read your WhatsApp messages and they're looking for a prop or something and you're just seated there looking at your phone. And lastly, they should have an intense knowledge of the script, okay? So that's uh, an outline of uh, basically the hierarchy. Um, uh, construction manager, like I said, works closely with the art director because uh, uh, they work right from the beginning as we build the sets and everything. And you can see the team below the construction manager, carpenters, painters, plasterers, scenic artists, and greensmen. All those uh, play a huge part in making the set look uh, as complete as it possibly can. Right, we move on. Script. Now this is the important bit, understanding the script. We've talked about the, we've talked about the hierarchy. Now you have to understand the very thing that you're trying to shoot. So understanding the script is one of the most important parts of the designers, excuse me. Sorry, understanding the script is one of the most important parts of a designer's job by carefully analyzing it, its direction notes, story and dialogue, the designer can extract important design information, observations, subtext, and its characters. These elements help form the basis for any story's unique design journey. Each story is different, obviously. And so from a designer's aspect, uh, point, it, each one is unique in its own way. So you have to understand the script in order to interpret it. The ability to add strength, conviction, and distractions to a weak script is a designer's great strength. Adding more depth and emotion through design can really bring a story to life. So you can see the significance of uh, production design here. Observe the story, its essence, and how the drama unfolds. Notice the locations that are in the script and the level of detail given to them. Also look at the characters and how they are portrayed. That also helps you in terms of what you want to see, how you want to design it. Because uh, different, different locations require different design ideas or different story, again, different scripts require different uh, design ideas. Okay. Um, Now we come to script breakdown. So as you read it, you read through it, you read it once, twice, three times, you have to break down the script into elements so you know exactly how you're going to go about designing. And this is all different members of the crew. But in the case of the art department, 
art director, obviously, produ um, production designer gets it, art director gets it, props person, set decorator, set dressers, everybody gets the script and reads it and breaks it down. So breaking down a script fulfills two specific purposes for a production designer. The first is to provide logistical and technical design information that plays a fundamental part in the planning and scheduling process. And the second is to supply the story's visual needs. Okay, so as you break down the script, you're noticing how many different locations are there. So even when the location uh, scout goes out uh, scouting for locations, are you looking at locations that are far apart? If they're far apart, that, that deals with logistics. Mm -hmm. Technical, how much work needs to be done in those locations? If you can't get the location, you have to build it. So where are you gonna build it? Do you have a, a sound sta stage where you can build this set? How long will it take and how much will it cost? Okay, so it's all to do with that planning and scheduling because with scheduling, depending on how far apart the locations is, the locations are, where do you start? Which location do you start with? And where do you end up? Okay. Um, move to the next, actually where am I? I seem to be losing my cursor. So, on the screen now is a sample of a, a breakdown sheet. Okay, as you can see on the top, there's date, there's a scene number, if it's interior or exterior, if it's day or night, the location, a synopsis of, of, uh, a synopsis of that particular uh, scene. So in the square that says set decoration, it shows you what you will put in a set deck. Uh, beneath that is props, so whatever props will be needed, if there'll be any picture vehicles, Prep is if there's any going to be any food there, if it's going to have any drinks and things like that. SFX, is there going to be fire? Is there going to be smoke? Animals, depending if it's a, a, a scene in a market. Do you have cows, goats, donkeys, chicken? Is it somebody's house or they have a pet cat or a pet dog? So this uh, breakdown sheet just helps you in preparing and knowing what will be required for that particular scene. Now, the next thing is the questions to ask as you break down the story, okay? As you break down the script, there are certain questions you ask, okay? And this is to ask yourself while you're reading the script. What is the story, okay? By trying to understand the idea of the script writer and the director, what do you want to tell and how can you support the story and enhance it through architecture, the core colors, structure and props. The second question is who are the characters? What is the social and cultural background of the characters? What is their goal? In which environment do we find which character? Understand each character by analyzing their history, their situation, social, religious, and cultural backgrounds. Select adjectives that would best describe each character, whether it's light, dark, pale, vivid, smooth, rough, warm, cool, Write a story for each character and choose what you think would be the most suitable color to go with the character, which ties in with the costume they would wear. The third question to ask yourself as you approach the story, where is the story located? Make a list of all locations appearing on the script, do some research about the location, the landscape, history, setting, and find out which existing location would best enhance the story. Is it on a farm? Is the, the, the location on top of a hill? Is it in a valley? Is it in a huge expanse of land? A small town? Is it a slum? Is it in a residential area? So all those are the questions. In which time period is the story set? Do your research about the, start, the stated period, past, present, or future, um, through photographs, documentaries, paintings, or written accounts. So you have to visit libraries or you just go online, whatever you need. Um, to help you do your research, okay? Uh, if the story is set in the future, imagine the development of society and the environment. Are there any forecasts? Find out how science sees the future. I'm a big file, uh, fan of sci-fi films and I just love the, the way the production designer thinks about how the set would look. For example, think of Nairobi in the year 2080. What would it look like? Will we still have matatus? What kind of matatus will, will there be? What kind of buildings will we have? What will the roads look like? You know, 
things like that. Lastly, um, at what, uh, what time of the year is the film set? In, in Kenya here, we don't really have seasons as such. We have a dry season and we have a wet season. So maybe that'll do more, more with if it's a certain time of, time of the year, is there rain? Again, is it, it's, it may be set in, a, in, the, in the wet season. Obviously, you, you're going to set up uh, specially fetched sprinklers and the like. But the whole idea is it'll help you in terms of the costume and the look. You know, when it's wet, it's very different. It looks very different from when it's dry, much as when it snows, like in Europe and the like, and, and, and summer, it is more pro uh, evident in, in, in countries which have the, the four seasons. So, it doesn't apply so much to us in this case because we just have a wet and dry season. But nonetheless, it may affect things like the costumes they'll wear, because um, you know, um, in much as we only have a wet and dry season, they can impact the look of the exterior immensely, sunny and rainy days, and can also influence the look of the interiors through the decor. Not to mention the action props used by the characters. If it's sunny, there's hats, sunglasses. If it's rainy, there's umbrellas, gum boots. So again, um, that plays a big part. Then we come to color and texture. As you know, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, color plays a bit, color and texture plays a big part in in. Um, production design. So for production designer, color is a vital part of communicating the visual language of a story to an audience. So powerful is this medium that it requires the designer to approach the production's color palette with considerable care and thought. Okay, so I will go and share with you a color palette for um, a script that was called Black Gold. Um, that's just the cover page that I did. And one of the first locations is a coffee factory. Now the color palette is basically to show the director and the DOP the kind of colors that you will see within that particular set or location. Okay, and you can see the small rectangles at the top there, which is showing you the different colors you will see within that space. And that helps the DOP with the lighting and the director, you know, and the wardrobe people with costume and things like that. So these are just photos. It, usually you'd go to the location and take reference photos and that'll help you when it comes to, I mean, that'll help the, the DOP when it comes to lighting the set and the wardrobe department with what clothes the characters will be wearing and the production department, I mean, the art department in case you need to paint the walls a different color or stuff like that. So one of these locations is the uh, coffee farm. Then we have a European coffee shop. Again, examples, samples of, of what they look like and the colors that you'd find there. Uh, then we had in, in that script, there was a compound of one of the characters. So that's, that's the home a location we thought would work really well, according to what the script was uh, talking about. So that's the compound there and that's another look of the compound and you can see the different colors that you will you will see that you will have there then you have a gambling den there's a gambling den in the scene so this is a location that we found which would suit the gambling den again you can look and see the texture and the different colors there uh, there was a scene in a Chinese restaurant so you can see the contrast, you can see how color and texture is working, but this is, we're just talking about color. You can see how the different colors all fit in. And lastly, there's a coffee farm. That's another location. So you take pictures and you, you know, look at the different colors that you will probably experience on the coffee farm. Okay, so that's a quick, just a quick overview of a color palette, which you share with the DOP and director. So let's talk a bit about color association. When we think of colors, we associate them, we associate them with certain objects because of our culture and upbringing. As kids, we discover how to identify colors by association. You know, red, red is for apple, green is for grass, for, for tree, yellow is for the sun, blue is the sky. 
etc. As we move into adulthood, these associations take deeper meanings where we respond to color through an emotional connection, how we feel and how it makes us feel, not just by object association. So it changes and that's why you notice uh, you'll go watch one movie which is a musical it's very colorful but if it's a horror everything is dark and dingy and it, you know there's no color nothing that makes us feel feel nice so to speak color needs to be placed in cultural context for it to have a specific meaning so different cultures uh look at color in different ways i don't have to explain that i mean if you look at the 44 different ethnic groups in kenya you can see how we all apply our colors like in our dress and you know you go into different houses and you see what colors they paint their walls uh what fabrics they use on their you know what curtains they have on their walls or what deco decorative fabrics they, they use on their furniture etc people from different cultures view colors in different ways and that's very obvious okay then we move on to um to our next um texture right? Texture is the surface quality of any substance. Texture allows us to differentiate between different tactile experiences and connects them with our senses to evoke feelings. Texture works hand in hand with color as it gives authenticity to a story. It adds another feature to the appearance of objects and matter, and it gives the story a tactile dimension. Okay. Um, Texture can also illustrate a period in time, a place in the passing of time. It can also show poverty or wealth. And these are the different textures you can see. I've just put samples of different textures. There's canvas, there's, there's a cowhide, there's the mabati with rust, there's that wood that has been aged, there's brick walls, there's a hessian, and there's the gray brick. All these, are, these, all these different textures make you feel different even just by looking at them, okay? And that's what you have to think about as a production designer when you're designing the set. What will you use? What material will best make, uh, will best work for the story? Where, where is it set, you know? Um, and are people rich or poor? You know, that kind of thing. So textures also work a great deal. Right, the communicating. Now there's different ways of communicating. Uh, production designer communicates with the, with the director and the art department. And the first one is the mood board. Now the mood board um, can be, it's, it's, it, it's just on a paper like A3 size. It serves to show the color concept of the set you plan to design and build and can also act as a guideline for the set dressing, props and costume. It can and should contain images of the colors of the walls and fabric you plan to use, the textures of the surfaces, are they rough, smooth, distressed, aged or shiny, samples of the wood, timber, marble, plaster or metal surfaces, fabric samples for curtains and upholstery, the set furnishings together, the dressing and action props. And I'll just give you, show you an example of that, uh, the mood board. That's just the mood board I clustered again for that particular show it's just i've just taken the same images but it's just generally to give you a feel of just the look of the whole picture okay and the colors that you 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 you'll probably see okay um after the mood board there's sketches these are sketches these are sketches for uh, a production i worked on um, and these were sketches that were done by the production designer. Uh, so there's that one, another sketch. And this is uh, um, another sketch showing you like uh, a scene. This, is, this was drawn by the uh, art director on the, on the shoot. This was for Sensei, this is Uhuru Park. And this was just as we discussed, he quickly sketched something just so that we could have a feel of the whole thing. Then there are plans, oops, my bad. There are plans. So in the, in the case of a location, you want to draw it, measure it out and draw it so you know exactly the kind of space you're working with. Um, 3D models, in, the, in this case, this was for uh, a film we're working on in Nanyuki. So you can see this is a scale model of the set that was to be built 
and that is the actual set being built. So if I can toggle between the two, you can see the importance of, uh, of the model being done to scale. And the photograph that you see was taken from the top of the tower on the left hand, the bottom left hand side of the model. That's the view. Okay, so I'll just quickly go through the, the notes for that. Now sketches, they should be a representation of how you would imagine the set would appear once complete. There can be illustrations of a particular scene that takes place in the set or architectural sketches showing the construction and finished look of the set. Floor plans and elevations, uh, they can be a, uh, this can be a floor plan and elevation for an existing location that is drawn to scale <laughs> using measurements you took during the location scout. It should provide, workshop. It should provide information about the window shapes and the door oh, height, width, the placement, etc. <laughs> So it helps visualize the set. It helps the director to create a shot list. Think of camera positions and angles. It helps to calculate the amount of paint, carpet, and wallpaper you need to decorate the set. It's a good tool to visualize dressing the set for the set decorator. Okay, so architect detailed architectural drawings showing every measurement, form, and details of the room, details of walls, doors, and pillars. And then when I talked about models built of cardboard or foam board to an architectural scale to give Okay, so I think we're out of time. I don't see us doing any more now. I guess I'll be ready to take any um, questions. Um, if there are any, I'd be happy to take any questions. Are there any questions? Anybody? I don't know if I can. Okay, I've got one question here. So I'm just scratching my back. Okay. Ah, anonymous attendee. Is it possible that as a set designer, you would ever have to get a real coffin in the cases where the scene is based on a funeral? Okay, I'll just answer that. Um, it depends on the budget. higher or make one okay and there's another question if the production designer does all that what is the work of a of a previs on set like the one used on the matrix franchise um Okay, Aaron Jacob, I don't know if you're there. Um, what do you mean by previs? Uh, I'm not sure. I get you. Let me get. Um, um, previs. Okay. 
Okay, are there any questions? I don't seem to be hearing for some reason. I'm waiting for any questions. I don't know. I'm not hearing any questions. I don't know why. Oof. Uh, it depends. It depends. Uh, okay. Hey Ali. Um, the, Hi. The participants are muted, so they can't uh, really raise their questions. They can only put in the Q. Oh, I see. So maybe you can touch on the 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 different sets, uh, like the one that was raised about the coffin, and um, some of the yes, issues. Yes, that, that I've answered that. I've raised. I've answered the one. Oh, all right. I've raised right. the coffin, and I'm just answering one about. Uh, maybe you can uh, answer without texting, so that. Um, Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Yes. Maybe okay. you can touch on so that. So I can quickly. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. Cheers. Um, how long will it take? There's one that's type your answer. Can I? Okay. Anonymous attendee. You're asking how long a sci-fi movie set would take to build roughly. It depends. It depends on the script. Um, Obviously, when you start reading the script first, then you, you start getting an idea of how big or how small the set is. So I cannot really give you an exact answer, but it just depends on, um, on the script, okay? Um, I don't know if that answers your question, but uh, even if it's like for a short film, you know, like if you're shooting a short film, sometimes you may want to build the set in a, in a, in a studio, so that also depends on how long, uh, how, you know, how, how, how big a story it is. Um, okay, I don't know if that has answered your question. Pre-visualization, pre okay. Mm. Right, let me answer. Okay. Pre-visualization. Aaron Jacob, what was your previous? I'll have to look at you. I wish I could see your previous answer, a previous question. Goodness, I'm a bit lost there. Um, Aaron Jacob, would you mind just sharing your, your first question? Um, if you're there, please, uh, Aaron. I'd really like to talk with you more about this. Oh, here they are. They're just two questions. Answer two. Oh, okay. Does all that? What is the work of previews on the set? Previsualization. Mm. Made from sketches helps the DOP. From from my experience, Aaron Jacob. Um, oh, Patrick O'Chain has answered. Yes, I think they would still work under the production designer. That's correct. Because the whole idea is, I know you've seen quite a lot of uh, stuff on, 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 on YouTube. Uh, and you notice they always have, uh, most directors like for sci-fi film actually have a storyboard artist 
draw exactly what the DOP will see uh, when they're shooting. So um, um, I don't know if that answers your question, Aaron. Um, but with like with with the production design, I I, I actually had a, a word with uh, Win Thomas. He works with the Spike Lee. He was actually Spike Lee's year mate in uni, and after they graduated, they worked as a team, and until this day, they still work together. And one thing that Win Thomas always does is to build models for everything, every set that he has to build. Um, uh, so I think um, it'll still work under the production designer. There's someone else here from, is it necessary to have all those different individuals involved, especially in a low budget film? No. If it's a low budget film, sometimes you may have to multitask. You can be the art director and the props person. Obviously you can't work alone. It'll be good to have um, somebody assist you. And it's just how you organize uh, your team. So depending on the size of the, of, of the production, um, if you notice, if you break down the script and notice that you have a lot more to do, then you'll have to go to production and ask to and request to have a bigger budget. And obviously with that, then you have more members of the team. Okay. Um, I hope that answers your question, Lewis. Um, as a production designer, do you design the set around your own interpretation of the script or does the director have to regulate your vision? Now, if you heard me uh, from the beginning, the production designer works closely with the director and the DOP and the producer. So his ideas, yes, will be influenced to a certain degree by the director, of course, but because the director has a certain vision. So you have to make sure that um, uh, you're able to help the director along with creating this vision. So in a way, I don't know, I can say regulate, yes, but you'll have discussions and I'm sure you, you'll reach an agreement. And in most instances, um, usually as you read the script, you may even start putting down your ideas in notes and sharing with the director. So it's, it's, a, it's a back and forth and... and um, you know, eventually you, you actually agree. I've never had any, I've never heard of a situation where the production designer falls out. Although, yeah, with the director, you've had situations where the director quit the production because of differences with the producers and the likes. So it, it does happen, but you try as much as possible to work as a team and, and strike a balance. I hope that's answered your question. Any other question? Um, I hope I've answered your questions. Unless it wasn't clear enough, by all means, please uh, come through. Let's see, is there any other? Let's see, open three, answer two. Oh, one thing I can say that I've noticed, uh, I just, the other day, I just checked on YouTube, The Mandalorian. Uh, they have moved from using green screens and blue screens to actually using LED screens. That's a huge development. Uh, for some reason, um, it seems to work better uh, than the green screen or the blue screen. But obviously, you have to have a huge budget for that. And I think Disney have enough money to, to work like that. Um, one thing I can say, though, as I as I as I speak here, I, I I really, you know, I've really enjoyed a lot working in the art department on various productions, and I certainly hope that most of you, all of you, one of you, will actually go on to grow and become a top art director slash production designer. I really do, uh, and I, you know, I have to say, I'm. This is for me. This is giving back, and and you know, this I love the the craft of filmmaking, and I certainly hope that um, I will see, I will see, um, you know, I will see a Kenyan art director emerge in the near future. Okay, Lewis, you've asked about the work of a director. Wow. Um, 
I mean, I guess I, I can answer it from the knowledge I have. I mean, the direct that's it's it, the director that's their picture, and I think different directors work in different ways. Um, you know, some some directors, most directors, I guess, they meet they they actually get the script and they pick specific people who will act their main cast. So, and, and you know, I, I, I guess I've never, I can't imagine how much work they have to go through, but you certainly need the support of the DOP and the, the uh, production designer, as well as the other members like, like, like uh, wardrobe, makeup, that kind of thing. So, all I've seen, all I've seen happen is directors going with the, in the different departments and having meetings with them and just making sure that everybody is in step. Everybody is in step. Um, I don't know what else I can see. I think that the best thing, the best, Lewis, Lewis, the best thing you can do is um, probably have a director actually come and give a, a webinar and they can share their own experience. I'd be lying if I knew exactly what the core responsibility is. Um, yes, they are using software called Unreal Engine to design the virtual sets design. It removes the use of green screen. The screen is also light, the same. It kills two birds with one stone. Yeah. Ashfaki Sak, thank you for that. As, as you may be aware, I'm very old school. I actually started in the analog times. So these are your times, and, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to. Uh, give us some serious uh, designs in the near future. Mm. Yeah, Aaron Jacob, that's correct. The production designer does a lot of work, much as we've got CGI, yes. In fact, that's, that's an issue that has come up where people are wondering with CGI and all that, is it really necessary to have a, a DOP? No, they work, they work very closely. And I think I mentioned it, I may have mentioned it in my notes. I'm not sure if I mentioned it in my notes about CGI, I can't. But I know with, with, with the development of CGI, a production designer is still very much uh, a member of the crew. And I think you see that with on the, whenever they're, 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 they're um, the, whenever they're, the, 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 what am I trying to say? With the credits, screen credits, what you'll always see a production designer mentioned with the titling, even at the beginning of, of a film, you'll still always see production designer mentioned. So um, I hope that answers your question. Any other questions? Or have I answered your questions? If anybody's dissatisfied, please let me know. Um, I can always interact later on after this webinar. I'd be more than happy to to, to share whatever the knowledge I have. But all in all, I can say I, I, I've been very fortunate to work with different production designers on different films and learned as I've gone along. Um, I've been very fortunate and very privileged and I, I'm grateful for that. And I certainly hope that um, those you young upcoming uh, filmmakers uh, get a chance to actually showcase your work and, you know, make us all stand up and applaud your effort. Are there any more questions? Anybody else? Any other questions? All right. Um, again, thank you so much for attending. Those of you who've watched this, uh, I'm very grateful uh, for the opportunity to share the knowledge. And hopefully um, this has helped you maybe get a better understanding of what production design is and it's, it, it's important as in the filmmaking. And I, I hope 
to meet with you one time, maybe on a set or somewhere and, you know, to see your work. But again, I'm very grateful to ADMI as well. Um, I, I'm, I, I taught there for a certain number of years. I can't remember how long ago, but um, I was uh, grateful to be able to interact with uh, younger Kenyans who are keen on uh, making a career out of film and especially learning more about production design and art direction and how it can, can help. Uh, my very best wishes to you. Um, I'll be looking out to see your work on YouTube. I'm sure some of you will go and uh, I'm sure some of you will go on uh, to make, oh, there's one more question. Why is it that we're not yet there as a film industry, especially on sci-fi movies? We're so much into Hollywood. We have the physical features to make our own Black Panther. That's true, Aaron Jacob, and, and I like your passion, Aaron. Um, I certainly hope that, but what, sorry, before I say that, why is it that we're not yet? Sci-fi films are very expensive. This is all about money. At the end of the day, you must have people who can finance your ideas. In Kenya, we don't yet have uh, individuals with the money who understand our work enough to actually invest in it. Because again, it is an investment. All those sci-fi movies, all those big Hollywood movies, they are funded by very wealthy individuals. Um, so again, we have to look for those Kenyans wherever they are, they're there. And we have to convince them Instead of putting up another block of flats, uh, we have this story we want to tell. It's a Kenyan sci-fi film, blah, blah, blah. You know, you have to know someone who knows somebody, that kind of thing. So yes, we, 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 we are very much ready. We're ready to make these big time uh, sci-fi films. You can even start with just a short film, sci-fi film. It could even be five minutes. It doesn't have to be you know, it doesn't have to be Black Panther-like. Just start with a five-minute, a short sci-fi film set in Kenya, 2090. You know, these days we've got a lot of digital artists in Kenya. We've got a lot of, you know, people who are really good with, with uh, CGI and the like. So it is very doable, Aaron Jacob, and I certainly hope that you're able to put your idea on film. Um, I'm there, I'm available. By the way, any of you who have any interest and would really like to chat some more, please feel free to reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to help. Um, I feel you know, I'm, I've reached a point in my life where I, I really want to give back. So um, don't think I'm gonna ask you for money or anything. I'll, I'll be happy to share ideas and to certainly see you um, grow and develop as a, as a, as a filmmaker. Okay, I guess uh, it's, I've got five more minutes left. I don't know if there are any other questions before we finish. Okay, uh, lady, oh, I didn't see, were there any ladies who participated, by the way? Um, I don't see ladies, but I'll just say ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your questions. And um, like I said, you know, I'm available. The guys at ADMI know how to, to reach me in case you want to reach me. And I'll be more than happy to sit with you. I know we've still got the COVID situation to deal with, but we can still chat. Sorry, we can still chat online. And, you know, we can share ideas. I mean, you can have an idea, send it to me. Okay, Derek, I will. I mean, Derek, um, what I'll do is, um, by the way, Derek, uh, I have to speak about um, your, I don't know if your director is still shooting uh, the movies in the, in the Kampala slums. I forget his name, but uh, by all means, you guys are, I've made some steps. So Derek, yes, I'll, I'll get your contact, uh, my contact to you and we can, we can chat some more. Okay, um, I guess that's it. 
Um, oh, Lewis, uh, written the story and I want to script it. Are there steps to follow on input dialogue to the written story? I think that Lewis, what you have to do is you have to have a, a, a screenwriter look at it. Then they can write the script for you. Okay. Um, oh, Isaac, you're very welcome. Very welcome. Thank you so much for, for participating. Uh, I'm very happy indeed uh, to have gotten an audience. Um, and I certainly, you have my backing. You know, whatever you're doing, if you need any help, I'll point you in the right direction. I'll give you my time. Um, and let's just get this done. Okay, so it was a real pleasure. Thank you. And uh, all the best with you. I know there's... Okay, Isabira Derek, um, I've got your email. I'll, I'll send you an email and we can start talking from there. Um, and anybody else, like I said, you know, let's, 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 let's raise our, our industry. We don't even have an industry yet, but it'll grow. Even with just a few of you, with your effort and your self-belief and support from um, different parties, we, we'll, we'll see something happen. Okay, um, goodbye everybody. I think I've got to go. This is my first webinar, by the way, so you have to give me marks out of 10. I don't know how much you'll give me, but all the same, I'm, I'm, I'm really honored and privileged to have had this opportunity and uh, all the best. Thank you. I think I'll do this.